Welcome back. Um, today we're just going to go through a quick video. I'm going to show you guys how to generate a toolpath for a part like this. This is a top plate for my frame. Um, yeah, there's quite a few things you got to take into consideration when generating toolpaths. Um, just kind of want to give you a, an idea of what it takes to set them up. Um, and I'll give you a couple of tips as we go along. If you ever do decide to do this, you'll kind of have a better idea of what what you should be doing instead of trial and error like I did. Uh, it's pretty pretty helpful info and hope you enjoy the video. Let's say I need to cut one of these top plates out, all right? And this is my sheet of material. We're gonna go into the setup. Uh, 500 by 400 are, is my material size. That's the carbon fiber. And I'm gonna make this top plate out of two mil carbon. Uh, the zero height is gonna cut from the top of that two mil and down. Uh, lower left corner is going to be my home position. And then uh, Shape Helco 4 is my machine. And I have a retract height set for 4 millimeters. So after it's done cutting like uh, a slot here, it lifts the tool up 4 millimeters and then it moves to the next spot. So I'll cut this slot next. Um, so yeah, that's all you do for your job setup. And then your sheet is set to go. So then you're going to want to place this as best as you can in a spot that you know is going to cut well. Usually the very edges of carbon is kind of a bad spot. Um, the carbon sometimes has some imperfections on the very edges, so sometimes you don't want to just plop that thing right in the edge there. Um, you'll have, sometimes it rounds over a little bit, and these squares are set up in millimeter increments, so you know you're three mil from the edge, which is still pretty darn close. So I'm going to kind of go up about four up and over from each corner. So say that's all I wanted to cut. I had this so it selects everything. Um, when I click it, so then all the parts stay together, like all the vector holes. So you unclick this button over here, this ungroups it. And then let's say we want to just cut all the holes. So you hold shift, you deselect the outer rim, and then we're going to go to tool paths. Uh, this is your tool path section. You usually want to just do contours. Use current selection. So what you want to do is you want to set your stock depth here. You could go two millimeters, but this is super risky because um, depending on, say, if my wasteboard isn't level, for instance, I have to put these carbon sheets on wasteboards. Sometimes they're a little warped. Uh, you do not want to go exact. You usually want to cut way through. So I tend to go a millimeter pass through on each of these. Um, this allows me whatever variance I have in that uh, wasteboard, and it'll still cut through the carbon because it sucks having to go back and regenerate a tool path because you didn't go deep enough been there done that so that sucks so yeah I go max step of three and then we have to pick our tool these are not the right tools it I'll find it here okay so you generally want to pick an end mill that's slightly smaller than the hole um, otherwise it it'll just drill the the mill right into the pocket or whatever hole you selected so say you got a three mil hole up here if you do a three mil bit uh, you're guaranteed to get the three mil hole but you're gonna have blowout on that back side of that carbon um, so what I've done lately is just use a smaller bit to mitigate that situation. Two mil works really good on this part. Um, so we're going to select that. I have predefined depth per pass and everything on this already. I can up the feed rate um, probably to about 300 millimeters per minute on this. And I still keep the plunge rate rather low. Um, and I can actually go up if I wanted to cut a little bit more aggressively on this part. Since I'm cutting three mil deep on this, I'll just change this to 1.5 so I can do it in two passes. Um, so we'll select that okay. Um, and then we wanna enable ramping. Ramping is a big deal. This actually changes the way the entry is of the bit. Um, it allows you to come in at an angle and ramp down um, at your desired hole or slot. Um, so yeah, this is set for 20 degrees. It seems to work fine for me. I'm going to hit okay. And then after that, you see all these blue paths. That means that's where the tool is going to go to cut these paths. Um, I'll kind of show you what these look like in a simulation here. So you can kind of see, ugh, it's hard to tell, but you can kind of see the way it ramps into this piece here. It goes down and then it's going to ramp down. And then in the holes, it spirals all the way through. And as you go through the backside, it's actually cutting sideways at a 20 degree angle. And then therefore it swoops around the end of that hole, getting whatever debris it broke through 
on its way out. So it, it cuts the holes really clean. And it, this is pretty much what all the manufacturers end up doing as well uh, to cut clean tool paths. So now that you have your inner tool path um, designated, you have to cut out the rest of the piece. Um, so what we're going to do now is select the outer. And then we can still use the same um, two mil bit that we have, two mil end mil. Uh, but this time you need to change the offset direction to outside right. This means it's going to cut on the outside of this line versus the inside of the line like we did on these other tool paths. Um, so change our depth to three mil. Since it's a two mil stock, we're going to cut fully through. And then we, we want to enable ramping on this as well. Uh, it'll enable this to kind of start at a point. It'll ramp into itself. And then it'll go around and then it'll ramp again at that spot. And it makes a nice clean path. So you hit OK on that. And it looks like we got a five minute and a seven minute job between the tool, uh, between each tool path. And we're pretty much ready to rock. So then all you got to do is hit Save Tool Paths. And you're going to generate the G code. Just like a 3D printer, after a slicer, this is like your slicer. This is exactly like a slicer setup. Um, instead of adding material, you're just taking it away. And then you're using a tool. Instead of your printer hot end is the tool, um, you need to pick which end mill you want to use as your tool. So yeah, that's pretty much how you generate a tool path and cut carbon parts. Um, the same goes for all this other stuff. Uh, the only thing that changes really is the way the thickness. My arms are five mil and my bottom plate's three mil. So then you just need to set up a separate sheet. So if this was a fresh sheet of two mil, this would be my blank canvas and I would save this. And then if I wanted to make more, say if I wanna make another one of these, control C, control V, and you bring this guy here and then I would probably just flip it so you can get them a little closer together. And then you just add them. Control C, Control V, and if you want to just cut a whole crap load of them in a day, you can have at it. And you just keep adding. Yes, yeah, so we'll jump out of this and uh, let's get some closing thoughts and we'll end this All video. Right. Back on the bench. Yeah, so I hope that information kind of helped you see what it takes to do a tool path on a part like this. Um, I know there's a lot of learning if you don't know what a CNC program is, if you never touched them before. Hopefully I made it kind of clear and concise on what you might need to do if you ever do get your own. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I've gone through to figure out what I need to do to get these parts to look halfway decent. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I think maybe in the next series of videos we can do, uh, we can touch base on maybe setting up a piece of uh, carbon fiber sheet onto some wasteboard. Um, I use a double-sided tape method um, with CA glue to hold it in place. But yeah, maybe that'll be the next video. I'll kind of show you guys some uh, just overall setup for getting your sheets ready to go um, in your CNC. So stay tuned for the next one.